Greetings and a welcome to the Spiritual Awareness Journey Programme, a virtual spiritual tool platform where the practical application of all things spiritual in our daily living is shared and discussed by experienced speakers from all walks of life as well as our special guests who are realized souls called Mahatmas. This program is brought to you by the Mali Terem YouTube channel. I'm your host, Smita, and we are delighted to welcome you from all around the world to spend this precious moment with us as we address this episode's topic, Surrender. In the flow of our daily lives, we are constantly busy exchanging energies through our thoughts, our words, our actions to achieve what we desire, what we wish to accomplish, or even who we want to become. All this through the act of giving and receiving. For example, we give our attention and receive information. We give our money in return for goods and services. And as the saying goes, it is in giving that one receives. Surrender, though, is a different kind of giving. It involves letting go and having a willingness to be open and receptive of something of grandeur, something more fulfilling and more powerful that has to do with our heart, our being, our soul. Our experienced panel today, our two speakers, Ms. Chan Mei Singh and Mrs. Cindy Makalai, as well as our special guest speaker, Mahatma Angira Baiji, will elaborate on this delicate process of trusting and letting go in order to receive and becoming more in tune with our own inner and higher self. Just as the caterpillar growing on a tree, on, um, growing on earth, eating leaves, surrenders itself to become a butterfly, to fly the skies and drink nectar. Similarly, we in this human existence as spiritual beings have the ability through surrendering to commune with the divine within our original spiritual source and enjoy a prosperous state of well-being, of feeling whole, connected, and complete. We hope that our speakers today will inspire you to seek this highest state of awareness by inquiring about spiritual knowledge, to become conscious of the spiritual being residing within, and forge a true connection with one's own spirit one's soul and start one's own practical spiritual awareness journey. Belonging to this one race, the human race, we have the potential as spiritual beings to raise our vibration to a most positive, high and vibrant state, surrendering and attaining our true goal, a spiritual enlightened world where peace, joy, contentment, and bliss will reign. We start today's program with our first speaker of the day, Ms. Chandni Singh. Chandni was born in Latoka, Fiji, and raised in Vancouver, Canada. She has been a legal assistant for the government of BC for over five years now, and been in the legal field for over seven years. She is an active volunteer at Sri Ram Hindu Temple, which allows her to stay in touch with her Fijian community. She has been and is actively involved in multiple volunteer groups, such as a BC Cancer Society, Heart and Stroke Foundation, a Surrey Food Bank, Surrey RCMP, and Aries Martial Arts. Alongside her spiritual health, and well-being, Chani also takes care of her physical well-being by staying active with mixed martial arts and weightlifting. She was lucky enough that her parents got involved with spirituality when she was quite young. While growing up, Chani was surrounded by spiritual teachers who would come and go to their home countless times and often had the privilege of having them stay at their home. Without further ado, please welcome Ms. Chani. 
Thank you, Smita Ji, and welcome everyone to this week's Spiritual Awareness Journey episode. And thank you, Spiritual Awareness Journey, for the honor and opportunity to speak today on the topic of surrender. I'm basing my talk on surrender today on spiritual ideas as opposed to our modern terms. Let me quote the words of an aspirant, J.P. Baswani. Our problem is that we don't want to surrender what we can surrender, and we do want to surrender what we can't surrender. Surrendering does not mean that you give up your duties and your responsibilities. Surrender does not mean that you go into a forest and turn your back on your commitments to sit in prayer or deep meditation. Surrender means giving up one's selfishness, one's personal de desires, likes and dislikes for the sake of a higher goal, like self-realization. And what I mean by self-realization is just that. What drives you? What makes you want to get up in the morning? I want to emphasize I'm not trying to influence a following or any particular way of living. What surrender means and how people want to take it is negative. What does surrender mean? And what does it mean to surrender? As stated in the Oxford Dictionary and defined in our modern terms, surrender is to admit that you have been defeated and want to stop fighting, to allow yourself to be caught, taken prisoner, etc. This definition can be apply to life in a more subtle way. To see the world differently, as opposed to simply master and ruler, leader and follower, right and wrong. Instead of one being defeated or feeling as if they have lost, one can accept those moments as a stepping stone. They can use those moments as a teaching or as a learning experience. A person can begin to accept the world for all that it is, for all its greatness and for all its flaws and failures, for all its joys and sorrows. That's why I want to speak about surrender so that I can share my view as I understand it. What we need to surrender is what we need to let go. We need to let go of our ego, our selfish interests and desires, our negative ideas, prejudices, preconceived notions and biases. We can't carry all of this and all of our excess baggage throughout our lives. We need to let go of our past in order to move forward. We must not forget our past, but use them to better our futures. Everything happens in our lives for a reason. We have people come into our lives and sometimes the people are not meant to be a part of our lives for the long run. Sometimes people enter our lives because that is the person that we need in our life at that time. As per conversation I had, surrender is like an exchange of energy in many forms. And how they explained this to me made me myself understand that we surrender things on a daily basis. We surrender our money in order to receive goods. We surrender our time to go out with our friends in order to stay home to do chores. We surrender watching television to spend time with our family. We surrender foods that we want to eat in order to go to the gym to get the body that we want. We are constantly surrendering something in order to what we think will better our lives in that time. It's interesting and fascinating that we do these things on a daily basis without even realizing it. Regardless of our religion, culture, ethnic background, what stage in life we're at, they all lead to the same thing. And what I mean by this is that we have such a wide range of speakers and we all have something unique and different to say. I also looked into some religions like Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, 
on the topic of surrender with more or less religious views towards the exact words, the quotes emphasized putting aside personal desires. The teachings say to surrender to God or to themselves. Once people surrender themselves, that act can also be considered acceptance. In spirituality now, what it means to spiritually surrender is to give up one's own will, thoughts, ideas, and direct their actions and teachings to a higher power. Like I previously mentioned, we do this in order to re reach a higher goal, a purpose, a, our purpose in life. Spirituality is what has brought us all together to speak about topics and the topics that we chose I think we were meant to get. Spirituality gives us knowledge. With this knowledge, people are able to branch out their thoughts and see with more than what meets the eye. With this knowledge, one gains wisdom that betters themselves, which in return helps to better others. And then it just becomes this rippling effect. If we were fully able to understand what it truly means to surrender our spiritual, to surrender to our own spiritual benefit, our lives would begin to flourish in ways that we didn't think were possible. To see beyond the materialistic world, to be willing to allow others to help us. We need to be able to trust that a power greater than ourselves is guiding us in the direction we were meant to travel in. It is a saying that I don't really like to say, but time, time, and again, I realize that it is true. And the saying is, everything happens for a reason. The title of our program is very fitting, Spiritual Awareness Journey. And that is truly what spirituality and surrendering is. For one, this platform is allowing us to all be aware of spirituality itself. And second, that this is a journey. This is not always a straight and narrow path. This journey to spirituality can be a lot, but we should have faith and trust in the journey and the process and be consistent. Sri Jinmoy said, surrender is a journey of outer turmoil into inner peace. A simple comparison to our spiritual journey is that of one going to the gym. A person can successfully eat healthy, train every day for weeks and months on end, and one day decide they want to eat something unhealthy and not go to the gym. Should this person stop going to the gym altogether because they had a bad day? No. This person had a moment and fell into their desires, but that doesn't mean they should stop going to the gym to better themselves. People wanted something now instead of what they wanted most. Just as we and me personally have days to struggle, that we struggle to see the growth within ourselves. This doesn't mean that we throw away what we have learned in our time and ignore the experiences that we experienced. I found a very interesting quote from Walt Whitman, which seemed to make sense in a sort of confusing way. I like the scientific spirit, the holding off, the being sure, but not too sure. The willingness to surrender ideas when the evidence is against them. This is ultimately fine. It always keeps the way beyond open, always gives life thought, affection, the whole man, a chance to try over again after a mistake, after a wrong guess. I am very blessed to have met my spiritual guide when I was 13 years old. And over the years, I have learned the meaning and essence of surrender. As I was growing up, I met many challenges and thankfully because of his teachings and the value of surrender, 
I was able to tackle many obstacles as a teenager and now continue to do so as an adult. Being able to know when to overcome ego and negativity, life can become simpler, can become happier with small victories over our problems. In my spiritual journey, my greatest joy and happiness was when I was able to spend precious time with my spiritual guide when he came to Canada. I had the greatest honor and privilege to drive him. Although he does not need it, he allows us to spend time with him because he's compassionate and kind. We get purified by the chance of being around him. The company that we're surrounded by make all the difference in our lives. I've been able to surrender selfishness and ego by following the path shown. He made me more grounded and connected through the wisdom that he shared to a higher energy. And this is the energy that's within all of us. We only need to surrender our vices and negativity to find an abundance of happiness and peace within ourselves. This is definitely still a journey for me and I have a lot more growth to go and I'm excited to continue on this path to see where it leads me next and what is next in my life. We should all try to surrender our ego, our selfishness, anger, negativity, and find a wealth of happiness and joy within ourselves. I hope, I hope you all have a wonderful Saturday and I want to thank you all for allowing me to share my thoughts. And again, thank you Spiritual Awareness Journey for this amazing opportunity to speak today. Thank you so much, Charming, for sharing your wonderful insights on surrender with us. As you beautifully said, while every day we're surrendering things in this material world, on a spiritual front, what we need to surrender is our ego, our own will, our thoughts and actions so that we can reach our high purpose in life to embrace our spiritual journey and progress on this path. So once again, thank you so much, Charming. Moving ahead with the program, I am pleased to present to you our second speaker, Mrs. Cindy McAlai. Cindy McAlai is a research professor in anthropology whose work focuses on issues of water management and environmental justice. She lives in Guadalajara, Mexico, and has been involved in the chapter of Man of Home there since 2001. She supports the ashram in Guadalajara with service and enjoys the benefits of regular spiritual discourses and community activities organized through the ashram. Please welcome Mrs. Cindy Makalai. Thank you so much, Smita, and it's a great opportunity to be taking part in this spiritual awareness journey on a topic that I think is also a bit of a challenge. Uh, I think we, when we hear this word surrender, it is very interesting, as Chandini was saying, to think about what is surrender and why is it important in our spiritual journey? Because it does have certain negative connotations associated with it. When we think of surrender, sometimes we think of giving up or sometimes we think of letting someone else have power or influence over us. But in spiritual terms, in terms of our own journey uh, in spirituality, of course, it has a very different meaning. And when I was uh, trying to think about this in my own life and how I could share some thoughts on this topic, then I came across a beautiful poem by the mystic poet Rumi. And Rumi said, the intellectual quest is exquisite like pearls and coral, but it is not the same as the spiritual quest. The spiritual quest is on another level altogether. Spiritual wine has a subtler taste. The intellect and the senses investigate cause and effect. The spiritual seeker surrenders to the wonder. So when we want to imagine what this opening up in our life is, because definitely Walking on this spiritual journey means opening up a whole new facet uh, of our life and, and our experience, which we can only attain by having the company of 
realized souls like we have today in this spiritual awareness journey and by having that realized teacher in our lives. But in order to give ourselves the opportunity to experience something greater in our lives, then I think we have to start also with realizing our own limitations. Because if we don't realize our own limitations, then they can become great obstacles because our preconceptions, our judgments, our beliefs uh, can be great obstacles to, to learning and to having an opportunity. And this reminds me of a story that we're all very familiar with of when the oracle at Delphi stated that Socrates was the wisest person that existed. And when Socrates was confronted about this, of course, we all know Socrates says, said, I know that I know nothing. And in another uh, translation that I found, what did Socrates say when he was confronted and said, you are the wisest person that existed? Then Socrates compared himself to another person and he said, although I do not suppose that either of us know anything really beautiful and good. I am better than he is, for he knows nothing and thinks he knows. I neither know nor think I know. And I think it is so important to make that distinction in our own lives, because when we think we know, <laughs> then oftentimes we are limiting ourselves and limiting our experience. And that humility, and that ability to connect with our heart and our intuition is, I think, a first step in surrender. That is my own experience. I think uh, we've all had different experiences where we came into contact with uh, realized souls or with spiritual discourse and felt that call from our heart. But we have to allow ourselves to feel that call and overcome some judgments, some preconceptions, some ideas that we may have about what our life is really supposed to be about. And this made me recall um, an experience with an acquaintance who attended a spiritual discourse. And I was curious, you know, what had been uh, their experience. It was a, a very wise, uh, realized soul who was giving this discourse. And I enjoyed it very much. And I asked this person, did you enjoy this uh, discourse? And the person uh, stated that they had not enjoyed it because the songs that were sung before the discourse, and uh, this person associated them with a certain religion. And so he was turned off completely and uh, didn't enjoy the spiritual discourse. So when we have a certain judgment, a certain preconception, then we close ourselves off to be able to receive something. And I think that surrender, surrendering our judgments, our likes and dislikes, as Chandani mentioned, is a really important starting point to think about how we can grow. Because what is it that we really have to surrender in this life in order to grow? And why do we want to surrender? I mean, that's the, the, the big point, isn't it? If we want to experience that wonder, then we will have to understand the importance of surrender. And when we think about what we have to truly surrender, there is a, a story of a king who asked a question in his court, uh, posed three questions to the people in his court and said, what runs faster than air? What can help you when you are truly in trouble? And what is the sweetest thing in the world? So there were people, of course, present in the court and they started to present some possible answers. And some said, okay, birds run faster than air. Or someone said, oh, what can protect you when you are in trouble? Well, a weapon can protect you when you are in trouble. And then what is the sweetest thing in the world? Someone said, okay, the sweetest thing is a sugar. Or someone said, no, the sweetest thing is honey. And none of these answers actually satisfied the king who was uh, listening. And eventually a blind man came 
uh, into the court. He was supported by his wife. And he said that he could offer some answers to the questions of the king. And he said, what is faster than air? What runs faster than air? He said, the mind runs faster than air. And what is what can protect you in a time of trouble or danger? It said your courage. If you have, if you are facing any trouble, then courage can protect you. And what is the sweetest thing in the world? He said, the voice is the sweetest thing in the world. And I think there is, of course, a lot of uh, wisdom in all of these answers. This uh, blind man satisfied the king and he received some recompense uh, from the king. And because he said that he was going to use that recompense to help his sick mother and his children, and this pleased the king also, that he wasn't going to use his for any selfish purpose, then the king offered an even greater recompense. But I think the key thing when we think about this in terms of surrender is to think about that fast flying mind. Because the mind is the greatest thing, of course, that we can surrender. And we know that wherever we focus our mind, then our actions will also follow. And if we want to be able to experience something beyond our own limitations, then we have to surrender that mind in meditation. And that is, uh, of course, the greatest challenge, I think, that we face in our lives. And it's also the greatest opportunity that we face um, in our lives because through that meditation is how we can understand also what Chandani was talking about, that everything happens for the best in our lives. Because from a certain perspective, we don't always feel that way. Uh, it doesn't always seem apparent, certainly from a materialistic point of view. But if we are in contact through that meditation, then that allows us to understand our lives in a completely different way and to start to stop swimming against the current. Because oftentimes um, in life, when we feel that we know what is best and that we imagine we have certain control over the situations that um, we are living through, then we can end up swimming against the current. And we all know that if you try and swim against the current in a river, or if you get caught in a current uh, in the ocean and you try to swim against it, you will only tire yourself out and, and put yourself in danger. But if you can go with that flow, then of course you will <laughs> go further and you will also be able to relax into this life. And that current, uh, we can understand that as the will of God. We can also understand that current in terms of the life breath that is flowing through us. And if we can connect with that life breath, then that can change all of our experiences of daily lives. And I think um, those of us who are enjoying this spiritual awareness journey are interested in that life breath and connecting with that life breath. And maybe we've all had certain experiences where by connecting with that life breath, our own personal way of living changes, our own understanding of life changes, our own uh, understanding of ourselves. I, uh, I'm i a little bit embarrassed to say that I think I uh, was, uh, in the past, often a very judgmental person as I was growing up. And maybe when we're going through adolescence, it's often very common <laughs> to be a little bit judgmental that, you know, we all go maybe through different periods in our lives where we feel we know what is best and the adolescents will tell their parents that they are completely wrong about everything in life because the teenager, you know, knows best and we understand. But even after that period in my life, I think I still maintained sometimes a very judgmental um, way of approaching life. And I know for myself that only through this spiritual meditation, through its practice, I have seen that change. And it wasn't a decision. Okay, uh, I will be less judgmental. Because sometimes when we try and 
decide things uh, through our mind. And the mind is very fickle. As we've said, it runs faster than air. And we can't maintain a certain idea that uh, we try to impose on our own personality. But if we try and change through a surrender in that meditation, then slowly and gradually our own person changes and maybe becoming uh, someone more tolerant was not even a goal, <laughs> but it was a result. And I think that the benefits of this meditation make us understand that gratitude um, that flows from your heart is one of the benefits of this surrender because what we can attain by even a few uh, measures of surrender, certainly the total surrender, like we will um, experience the words of someone who has achieved that total surrender because we have a realized saint with us uh, today. But even the benefits of some action in that regard of trying to flow in that breath of life, the benefits are unimaginable, really. And the gratitude that flows um, in our life for who this teacher who has been able to connect us with that um, life breath is really, I think, um, even that is definitely a glimpse of that wonder that Rumi is speaking of, because the true joy that can come through that surrender, surrendering your mind in meditation, surrendering your actions in service so other people can attain that same experience. That is the fountain of joy in life. And when that pure joy comes from our hearts, then we have a glimpse of that spiritual wonder. And we can understand that, um, as it said in the Tao Te Ching, sometimes the spiritual things are upside down. So what maybe has a totally negative connotation in the material world is actually the most beautiful thing in the spiritual sense. So this surrender is um, a path of joy, a word full of joy and a word that can bring us the experience of that wonder. So thank you so much for this um, opportunity to share um, my humble experience. And I hope that something I have said has been uh, positive for those of you taking part in this spiritual awareness journey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cindy, for sharing your wonderful and inspirational thoughts with us. What a beautiful example of Socrates you gave. And I think it perfectly sums up the need for us to surrender. Thank you once more for your wonderful thoughts. It is now our great pleasure to present to you the Gujarat duo from Gujarat in India, singing for us the devotional song, I Surrender, based on the lyrics of Hillsong Worship. Please enjoy. I know 
to the Gujarat duo for this moving song performance. The Spiritual Awareness Journey is now honoured to present to you our third speaker of the day, our special guest, Mahatma Angira Bhaiji. Mahatma Angira Bhaiji is an enlightened saint from Haridwar in India. She is a disciple of Sri Sipalji Maharaj and spiritual saint of Manav Dharam organisation. She has successfully provided spiritual enlightenment for the past three and a half decades in various parts of India, USA, South Africa, Kenya, New Zealand, Australia, and presently in Lucknow, India. Her main aim is to uplift humanity by rendering spiritual discourses on the essence of all scriptures and teaching spirituality to the aspirants. Please welcome Mahatma Angira Bhaiji. My humble salutation to the lotus feet of Almighty God. Greetings to all viewers. Thanks to Smita for introducing me. Thanks to both the previous speakers. And thanks to all musicians who sang and performed very beautiful devotional song. I'm thankful to the members of this spiritual awareness journey for giving me a chance to be a part of this beautiful and inspiring program. Today's topic of this program is surrender and both the speakers beautifully explained about it. The word surrender sounds very easy and simple. But the impact of it is very high. 
which one cannot realize or understand without having spiritual insight therefore i would like to give my spiritual point of view on subject of the surrender i know to surrender someone is not easy as we think saying is easy but to apply in our lives is difficult there are some requirements which one has to have for example reverence unshakable trust unwavering faith and the most important is love we see in the society that to give up our negativities just now we heard from chandni that surrender means to give up our negativities it is very very true but to give up negativities it is very hard one thing to know that by kneeling down or name of losing or name of becoming weak are not surrender because many time we talk about that and we say that once we go to doctor and during our treatment we surrender to doctor but from my point of view that is not complete surrender that is just our physical helplessness also we believe same thing when we travel by public transports or any transport we think that we surrender ourselves to the drivers but that is also according to need of our travel we surrender to drivers that is also not complete surrender or perfect surrender surrender means renunciation of desires surrender means renunciation of aspirations surrender means to giving up our negativities and living life accordingly to whom we are surrendered i know it is not easy to give up negativities but one thing we have to keep in our mind that negativities are barrier to complete surrender if we want to go 
on spiritual path if you want to move forward on spiritual path we have to give up our negativities anger ego desire greed jealousy all these negativities are barrier to move forward on path of spirituality people even cannot offer something to others without greed i'm sure everyone experience that part even in temples or any religious places one offer something to out of their own desire to fulfill but our same sensitivity says that until we surrender ourselves without any wants without any desires it is not complete surrender the meaning of surrender is death of i and birth of your my personality is no longer mine it becomes one with almighty god it becomes one with absolute truth which is within us even saints say that surrender means when i is no more that reminded me the example of river i'm sure everyone noticed that when river merges into the ocean the river dedicates its name its identity and its form to the ocean and advantage of it is river attains the vast form of ocean when river meets to ocean it evaporates and reaches to the clouds and the same clouds bring the rain and cools people and also quenches everyone's thirst that is perfect and absolute surrender complete surrender we have to learn from river because if we signify the river and ocean to us our mind is river and our soul is ocean we must learn to direct this mind towards the ocean the soul we have to direct this and how we can learn that 
know that we need guidance from genuine guides who walk on this spiritual path and experienced absolute although we know that our mind flows 10 different directions to direct this mind and flow towards soul is not that is but if we go to experienced soul which in our scripture say our saints say that living spiritual master great souls who are experienced souls and he train this mind they make this mind healthy because if mind is healthy everything else is fine this one line generates the feelings of complete surrender that mind is healthy everything else is fine now i would like to tell you the remedy for mind because when our physical self feel unhealthy or we feel sickness or something physically sickness we go to doctor and we get remedies we get medicines from doctor in the same way this mind also need remedies and for that we need to go to doctor spiritual doctor because mind is inside for that the remedy is also inside it's within us but only living spiritual master give that remedy and there are some steps to follow for that the first step is we have to attach this mind to the soul and spiritual master teaches us that that how to attach this mind to the soul because the nature of soul is pure blissful and it's a total pure happiness even in many of our scriptures even rishi patanjali say that union between mind and soul that is the real you and living spiritual master teach us to have the union mind and soul and once we start 
attaching the mind to the soul is our mind start getting healthier and virtuous then our vision start getting broad that is very very important our vision start getting broad in the same time we see things in wise way and that is why let us all learn to attach this mind to the soul and for that we have to go to master and surrender ourselves without any doubts without any argues because there is no room for doubts and logic to surrender if there is argues and logic then you won't surrender fully and that is why i am requesting everyone to go to master and learn that technique i myself also learn from my living spiritual master sadguru dev sri satpal ji maharaj he taught me otherwise i also was like cindy said she had had that type of nature when i in my childhood i also was very ang i had anger but when i started practicing this technique i remove myself that anger remove and that's how i am in front of you today uh, that is why i would like to tell everyone and uh, thank you everyone to this uh, heard me because uh, this uh, spiritual awareness journey is uh, teaches us to aware of our spirituality we have to be aware of our, to our soul and if we don't know that then doesn't matter how many uh, programs and all that we listen that is why thank you very much Thank you so much, Mahatma Angira Baiji. We are deeply grateful for your enlightened and beautiful words. As you said, if we want to move forward on the spiritual path, we have to renounce our desires and surrender ourselves with utmost faith to the spiritual master, who is the perfect guide equipped to teach us how to direct our mind to the soul, where we can experience peace. pure happiness and bliss and thank you so much amira bai ji we would like to thank each and every one of you for your presence here on our spiritual talk platform today we hope that you've enjoyed today's episode please feel free to drop us a note with your comments and if you have any questions or comments please email us at spiritualawarenessjourney@gmail.com the email address has also been provided in the chat box Our next spiritual awareness journey program will be held on Saturday, 28th August 2021. Episode 14 will be on the topic of grace. A big thank you to our speakers as well as our sponsor, Man of Dharm YouTube channel. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm your host Smita from all of us on the spiritual awareness journey wishing you a healthy and joyous journey. See you soon.